Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about the problem of finding the longest increasing subsequence. First, let's define what is increasing subsequence. For example, we have a vector like this. What increasing subsequence does it have? It has 3, 6. 3, 6 is increasing and it is a subsequence of this vector. 2, 6 also increasing and it is a subsequence. 2, 4, 5. 2, 4, 5. And 1. Even though it only has one element, we can still consider it as an increasing sequence. And the longest increasing subsequence is the longest among all the increasing subsequence. So our problem is for a vector d of size n, find its longest increasing subsequence. On the surface, this is not a difficult problem. As long as we find all the subsequence of d and extract those subsequence who is increasing, and then we can find the longest increasing subsequence. So our first algorithm is like this. For integer i from n to 1, find all the subsequence of d with the length of i. If there is one increasing subsequence, then we are done. That one ought to be the longest increasing subsequence. So we can break. This algorithm is simple and it should work. But the problem is, how complex is this? Let's consider how many subsequences does d have with the length of i. The answer is this formula. So the worst case complexity of this for loop is a summation of this formula with all i. So we get this for i equal to n to 1 and sum up every value of this formula. And I trust you have learned from your math class this is exponential in n. So the complexity of this algorithm is not acceptable. We have to find a better algorithm. Now let's try to solve the same problem with dynamic programming. The idea of dynamic programming is to solve a complex problem by breaking it down into smaller sub-problems. So first, let's find the smaller sub-problem. Let's define a vector L, and Li itself is also a vector, which is the longest increasing subsequence of D that ends with Di. In other words, of all the increasing subsequence of d that ends with di, li is the longest. And by definition, l0 is d0, because the increasing subsequence that ends with d0 must be d0 itself. Let's use our old example to find l. l0 must be 3. L1 is 2, because 3 is bigger than 2, so 3, 2 is not increasing. L2 is 2, 6. L3 is 2, 4. L4 is 2, 4, 5. And L5 is 1, because 1 is the smallest. So this is our definition of L a smaller subproblem. And as long as we find every vector of L, we can easily find the longest increasing subsequence. In this case, 2, 4, 5. So we have an initial condition, and if we can find a derivation formula, which can use L with smaller i to compute L with bigger i, and then we can find every L. By analyzing the problem, we get this formula. Li is looking at every Lj where j is less than i, 
and dj, which is the tail of lj, is less than di. And then pick the one that is the longest and append di to the end of it. Let's look at our example. Let's say our i is 4. So li is l4 and di is 5. And we have already found every L from L0 to L3. And next, we want to find L4. So first, we look at every L from L0 to L3 whose tail is less than DI, 5. So we got L0, L1, and L3 whose tail is less than 5. And then we pick the longest, which is L3. And lastly, we append di to the end of it. So we got 2, 4, 5. So this is the algorithm. If it is still not clear to you, I'm sure it will be more clear when you look at the code. This is the C++ implementation of the algorithm. In the main function, I create a vector of int, and then pass the vector to a function called calculus, which calculate the longest increasing subsequence. So this function calculus is where the algorithm is implemented. As you see, the code is quite compact. It only has about 10 lines of code. First, we create L. And L is the same size as the input data D. And then we initialize L0 to be D0. That is the initial condition we have talked about, about L. And then we start the loop to find every entry of L. Since we already have L0, so our loop will start with 1. I will start with 1. And for each I, we'll have an inner loop of j, and j is from 0 to i minus 1. And for all the j's, we'll find the longest lj whose tail dj is less than di. And here we are using li as a temporary variable to store the longest lj. So by end of the inner loop, Li is equal to the longest Lj whose tail is less than Di. And lastly, we append Di to the end of Li. It is this Di that we are talking about. By end of all the loops, we have computed every entry of L. To visualize the result, let's print out every entry of L. This is a print util that I have to print a vector. Now we can run the program. So it prints out every entry of L. This is L0, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. And L4 is the longest increasing subsequence. So this result is the same as the result that we have manually calculated. Lastly, let's analyze the complexity of our algorithm. This is n, and this is another n. So the complexity of our algorithm is n squared which is much better than exponential in N. So the idea of dynamic programming is sacrificing some of the space to substantially reduce the time complexity. In this case, we have sacrificed the space of L to bring the time complexity from exponential in N to N square. That's all for today. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. Bye-bye.